Hey, what's up? It's Jim, and today I'm going to talk about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem. Coming into this Ninja Turtles, uh, we just kind of come off of probably one of my favorite uh, versions of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which was Rise of TMNT, which just had its sort of finale movie on Netflix almost exactly a year ago, which is kind of insane to think. So I wasn't super into doing another one. Uh, but um, I am happy to say that this is actually really good and takes on like what most different versions of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles always do is take on different elements, do different things with it. I think this does actually really work on its own and is also doing something original and different. And the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, first off, you know, for as long as they've been going and I saw actually the first one, uh, in theaters in 1990. I took my daughter to this movie and uh, I was six when I saw the first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. My dad took me and my sister. I took my daughter to this and she is currently six. So that was kind of a cool full, full circle moment. Um, but I think one thing that the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, there's a lot of things that have changed over the years and there's a lot of different versions. But one thing that has not changed until this one is they never were really teenagers. Uh, now I know that it was sort of a parody title and the whole thing's kind of silly, but they've never done a version where they're played by teenagers and act primarily like teenagers, not like weird sewer turtles who mutated and stuff. More like teenagers. And I actually think this works with that really well. They sound like kids. They're acting like modern kids, not like um, the turtles you expect them to be. I don't think Michelangelo says cowabunga. Nobody says duh. Um, but there's certain elements that, you know, guess what? Kids still like pizza. Kids still want to be accepted. Ninjas are still cool. As long as they have those things, they're fine, basically. This uh, Mutant Mayhem put the kind of lore, the regular things you expect from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but actually make them sort of like actual kids, you know? And I think that's an interesting way to take it. I know this was kind of conceived by Seth Rogen and a team of writers, and this is directed by Jeff Rowe, who helped make Mitchell's vs. Machines. But it plays off as more of a wackier and more natural story. This is starting over and doing different things with it. And in some ways it feels like they're not as married to the lore, the various different versions, but as bizarre as it is to say, that actually works for this, which usually, usually it's not me or people being like holding on to their old turtle figures it's more that um when someone does that in general not with ninja turtles this isn't a next mutation situation it's usually they make the wrong instincts and they often made i think uh the right ones now teenage mutant ninja turtles mutant mayhem is about the turtles who have been in hiding this whole time in the past 15 years there's supposed to be about 15 we assume or so we're told after baxter stockman who is played by uh guincardo esposito it's an upgrade from tyler perry i think we can all agree he uh is trying to make creatures and trying to make you know, a family of his own out of these mutants and you can see various bugs and stuff but as these uh evil kind of people come and attack the lab he's in, the mutant gin goes down the sewer, and the various people, the creatures he's experimented on are taken, and then 15 years later you see the turtles and Splinter, and you kind of know them, uh, but you know that this has been created because of the incident that happened at Baxter Stockman's lab. They want to sort of be more on the surface world uh, rather than just like, kind of sneaking around and getting uh, food for Master Splinter. They find out that there is uh, some various crimes going on and there's someone named Superfly and this movie makes literally no Curtis Mayfield jokes unless I missed one or anything about the movie and he's called Superfly and Ice Cube's in it. Look, I'm pretty sure Ice Cube's seen Superfly. I don't know about anyone else on this, but I'm like, I'm pretty 100% that Ice Cube has seen Superfly, but whatever. Maybe I missed it, there's a lot going on. They are trying to find this guy Superfly, and he's kind of stealing various high-tech things and what he's up to, and they find out he, he and the other mutants are basically from Baxter Stockman's lab, and they're trying to do an evil kind of thing with the mutations and the mutagens as they grow up as their own family, separate from the Turtles and Splinter in their family, and they have to sort of decide 
what side they're on. At the same time, they meet uh, a young uh, reporter, April O'Neil, as she is trying to discover them and figure out what they are as she wants to break a major story. One interesting kind of thing about this, and I think I've talked about how uh, before in other reviews, and I think in streams and stuff, my daughter likes the current version of April O'Neil, who's uh, a little black girl who's like around the same age as the turtles. This, that works even better because they're actual teenagers and she liked that as well. But when I showed her pictures in the 1991, she was like, who's that lady who's hanging out with the turtles? So I think it's worked in reverse. If you hear people get upset about it, if they go to back, the kids I think would be upset now. Um, which is kind of funny. The thing that works about this, and I'm not a big uh, Seth Rogen screenwriting fan, or on, he sort of annoys me sometimes, but and I think he has a lot of confidence in his screenwriting ability, which is interesting compared to most, if not all of his filmography. But I think what works in this is first, the animation style, and second, its take on it and how it handles the villain. Because um, I recently reviewed TMNT, and I think that, was a, a good choice because it helped this movie out. But uh, first off, the animation style is very influenced by obviously Spider-Verse. And in a good way, I've heard people say, oh, well, the, the way Nimona looks, the way this looks, and it feels like a lot of people try to get away with sort of uglier design choices based on Spider-Verse. This is not the case in this. This has a very sketchy, interesting style. They're using CG, really, really interesting stuff in this. I, I really like the sketchy style of animation, obviously. I sort of look at, like it when animation looks a little crappier, but also had kind of a claymation, stop motion vibe to it as well. So it really probably one of the better designed uh, animated movies I've seen this year uh, that's you know not Spider-Verse but um, still I would say it's towards the top it's a really interesting design I liked looking at the screen I liked looking at the various characters they have weird characters they have ugly characters they uh, the humans look strange all that stuff it really like kind of popped and came alive and it was like like generally i like this age of turtles animation because i hadn't liked the previous cg thing and i didn't like the base stuff and i was like i guess this is a thing i used to like and now it's this other thing and this is like stuff i i want my eyes to enjoy and i i liked enjoying the animation of this is very beautiful there's a lot going on it reminded me sort of actually of Leica and mixed with spider-verse i would say more of what i got from this i, I thought that was absolutely really cool uh what they're doing animation wise it, it really works and i think the cool thing about ninja turtles is it's so hyper stylized of an idea and so strange and stuff you can really have fun with it animation wise and if you get someone who really knows what they're doing and i think jeff Rowe, i don't know if he designed it but he got that animation and that design to really pop um, making this a really nice interesting uh, animation style just gorgeous to look at one of the more interesting films uh, I've seen this year visually absolutely just because um, it's such an interesting way to do it just combining like kind of stop motion and and even like the visuals like when they did a stop motion and kind of the sketchy style and even when they do the fights they did it in the actual martial arts way you you shoot you know traditionally like having like a wide kind of like almost like i don't know what it's called exactly but it's, it's those wides where you see the whole room and you watch them go from one end to the room to the other and they did a cool thing where they cut between them each of the turtles when they're going into these places but i was like this is like a martial arts thing like they shot the martial arts sequences like f the, the film language that martial arts films have and i i thought that was actually really cool so i I really like what they did visually with this. I think that using actual teenagers, and um, I read that apparently they actually had them all record together, which is not the case in most animation. Seth Rogen claimed they did that on Lion King, which is, um, if that, that movie was like literally horrible, but if, if he got a good lesson from that to make this what it was, I think it was maybe not worth it, but um, glad that worked out I guess but the turtles have amazing chemistry together they feel like four kids um, I like that they use that have them on their phones and stuff like that I also like their chemistry with April she feels absolutely part of the team Jackie Chan was very funny um, but they, they, it really melds well and it was a smart idea to make it like what if the turtles were just actual teenagers is an interesting take at this point like other than like what if they're from space I think it was an interesting take and one that really worked with these characters because they are teenagers and I think most kids like want to see them be kids you know not just there are it is cool to say they're these teenage ninja turtles but we should actually let the teenage part kind of take 
center stage. I think a lot of times we let the ninja part and the turtle part and the mutant part, especially in this movie. Um, but I, th I think emphasizing the teenage part was a really smart move. Also, the villain in this, like in the TMNT, the 2007 movie, the villain is like somebody we'd never heard of. They had to bring uh, Lawrence Fishburne in to like explain who the villain was. And he's like no connection to the turtles whatsoever. In this, it's like they set up perfectly so Baxter Stockman and what happens with Superfly is ingrained with who they are and it's kind of showing like other mutants and like goes into various ideas with with them as characters and them you know feeling about humans and uh, being discovered and acceptance and it like really worked very well I think it is very hard for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movies to not be about the shredder he's sort of like you know it's like who you expect to be in these and when you don't do that usually those movies aren't really good and and so i think the fact that this is as good as it is and has a different reel and speaks highly of it i'm very curious how if they're able to make a second one and if you've seen it or not you've got to assume they're going to want to do shredder at some point i hope uh when they do they're up to the challenge but i thought uh for a film that is shredder less i think that really worked out for this film and they really wrote it well to make that villain matter to them not just be a random villain i don't think that works for the movies i think for the show you can have a couple episodes why not uh but for a movie like the ninja turtle movies are sort of events so like really do something with it like i've said throughout all this the, the kids who played the ninja turtles are really quite good in their roles i think they're really excellent ao edbury as april is is really good and really funny i really liked her portrayal of her jackie chan was really funny as well and ice cube was great as a villain he really has that presence and ice cube's a great actor i always thought he was underutilized everyone else who's like a celebrity voice other than atazia demonstria who i think uh, works perfectly for animation they should have her be in you know, a lot more cartoons she has a great voice but like having all these celebrity voices who i didn't even know they were there most of the time like Maya Rudolph, Paul Rudd, Rose Byrne, John Cena, uh, Seth Rogen, you can do, Seth Rogen can't hide that Seth Rogen voice, but it really made me go like, why are these celebrities here if I don't even know they are there? It like didn't make a lot of sense for me. Um, I think they could have just hired a bunch of voice actors and it would have been fine. It really didn't like elevate the film. Obviously, I mean, there's a strike right now, so I don't think a lot of them could have promoted it anyway, but it just felt a little silly. Like, what was the point? Why not just hire a voice actor? Like, it just doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. Mr. Beast is in this, and I'm not sure if he was the evil Times Square person or the good Times Square person, but I read from several people he might've been the evil one. Anyway, Mr. Beast is in here. He, I didn't really recognize who he was, so. I think this is a very good Ninja Trolls movie and a good reboot of it. I don't know if it is my personal favorite or everything. I had a really good time with my daughter seeing it. She really liked it. Um, I think it is a great, actually, Turtle family movie. It's a great starter kind of movie for the franchise and stuff like that. Maybe the Rise movie was more connected to the show. Uh, but I, I don't know if this is like, maybe theatrically, this is my favorite animated one. And it's definitely the best Ninja Turtles movie I've seen in theaters. Probably since 1990, I'd say. I'd say it's better than Secret of Those. Let's say that. I, I'd put it very high on the theatrical ranking. But when we get into like Turtles Forever or uh, the Rise of Team and Team movie, I'm a little less um, charitable. Um, I think it is very good, and I think it was a very smart movie and understood what it needed to do to get all of that to work in a way that I think a lot of kind of superhero stuff and stuff, you know, this is a superhero movie or comic book movies, don't think as much as ways to get a villain to connect to the heroes and connect to the overall story as well as this does and there's a lot of instincts in this that i do really think um the screenwriters in this which there's a, like a lot of them actually seth rogan evan goldberg jeff rowe dan hernandez and benji smith uh, i think they, they they got what they needed to do and it seemed to reinvent certain ideas that i thought really worked for it and were smart and uh worked perfectly for the characters actually so i like i like this this is a good action adventure thing i think a lot of times with animation unless it's like a huge big thing or from a pixar or something these things kind of get ignored like ruby gilman and stuff ruby gilman was good as well but i think this is a little more interesting design wise 
on that certainly. Um, and, I, and I like what it's doing with the Ninja Turtles. The Ninja Turtles are in a safe hands with this. This is at least a good version that I'm comfortable like wanting to show my kids. I didn't like the Michael Bay stuff. I know that was directed by someone else. I wasn't into the versions around that time, but this is one where I'm like, this feels like Ninja Turtles to me, but also feels like a Ninja Turtles for the new generation. And I, I was often thinking uh, when watching this, was like, is Ninja Turtles going to live sort of past me or am I kind of like forcing Ninja Turtles onto the next generation and then when they're older they will not take it on as much. Um, I, I sort of sometimes think that but I do think this is more looking at it for that new group and less about you know comforting me necessarily as a fan who you know was there for the initial rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I still think this is a really good version of it and really got like what made the comic book special, what made the original movie special, like what made them so much fun and it's because when I was a kid it was cool saying you know dude and cowabunga and like you know they were the cool kids and these I don't know if that would work as well. Cool kids. I think people want characters who are relatable there's a reason Marvel is so successful. People like their heroes to be relatable. And these are very much more relatable turtles than we've had in other versions uh, to a degree that I think really makes this movie work um, and work well because you can actually see actual teenagers be the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And that is, I think, enough of a reason to you know, revisit this franchise that you know, seemingly will never end. Uh, but uh, I'm, I'm excited for what's to come from this. And I think it was a, a really smart, different idea of it. It might not be, you know, my favorite animated one and you know we each take our own pieces of the ones we like but if you look at this for what it is I think this is very good at being the uh, new teenage team of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So if you have seen Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem and you would like to talk about it then comment below in the comments and subscribe if you would like to.